In the first two parts of the series, we set up a hat color product attribute. We now need to create our product variation type, which can be thought of as the template for the specific instance of a product that customers will purchase. To do this, I'll navigate to Commerce, Configuration, and Product Variation Types. Here you can see a list of product variations that have already been created. Let's add a new one. We can start by giving it a label and selecting that we would like the variation titles to generate based on attribute values. We can then configure some default traits, choose the order type to use, and select attributes we want to display as part of this product variation. Any attribute can potentially be used for any product variations. It just has to be selected here. As you can see, our hat color attribute is in the list of options. I'll select it and save our variation type. We can see that the hat variation type has been created. Let's go back and edit it further. Like the product attributes in the previous video, I want to add a custom field. I'll go to the Manage Fields tab. Because of the attributes we've added, there are already some custom fields here. Let's also add a product image field. We could potentially choose a new field type from the list of options, but I've already set up an image field for other product variation types. I'll use that field instead, which sets up some basic settings already used. It's a good starting point. The first thing I'll do here is add some instructions that administrators will see when adding products of this type. It just provides them with some clarity to reduce any confusion later on. I can then go through and update any other settings as I see fit. I like to place all of my product images into a specific directory when they are uploaded. This is purely for file organization on the server. I'll do this, change a few more things, then save this field. The field has been saved. Next, we'll need to manage how our administrators will view our product variation type when adding content. This is done in the Manage Form Display tab. Step one here is to order the fields how we want our content creators to see them. I'll make image the first field they see. Then I'll go through the rest and change them as I see fit. Next, I'll review the field display widgets and their default settings. Since we just added the image field, I'll open up its widget options to show you what is there. The preview image style dropdown is used to change the size administrators will see the image when uploaded. A small thumbnail is usually fine, so I'll leave these settings as is and save the display. Next, I'll manage the display settings that affect what our customers will see. Again, I'll start by reordering the options. Depending on how customized your product theme template is, these settings may or may not have an effect. I'll then choose if the field labels are to be displayed or not. I'm actually going to hide them all here. Now, on the front end of the site, I don't want the original uploaded image to be displayed because it could potentially be huge. Instead, I'll use an image style that I've already configured for product images. I'll also make sure that the images are not linked to anything. The remaining settings are fine, so I'll save this display. This completes part three of our video series. As you can see, 
adding fields opens up a huge number of options for customizing your product variation types. In the next video, we'll move on to creating our custom product that this variation will be a part of. You can think of products as being what customers will see in a catalog and what they might review, like a hat. Product variations, on the other hand, are the specific instances of the product that the customer will ultimately purchase, a blue hat.